Moving on to the 16th of June, it's a very eventful day as you can see from the map, and I'll just start straight into the squadron summaries with 441 giving us 12 of our aircraft swept the Con Alisso, Falaise area. Flight Lieutenant Draper, Flight Officer Gamey, Flight Officer Horrell, and Pilot Officer Hill return to England by LTS. I assume that's a light transport ship to ferry four Spitfires from Red Hill. So relatively uneventful for this squadron. Then we get into 442. Airborne at 0605, and while Flight Lieutenant Kelty and Flight Lieutenant Wright were making a circuit on takeoff, a Fuck Wolf 190 bounced them straight the field and got away. A few minutes later, Kelty and Wright and two others took a squirt at a ME-109, which was destroyed by No. 443 Squadron. The last night at 4, three of our officers had practically all of their hair clipped. Due to the dust at this aerodrome, a number of the others are following their example. Some strange-looking heads, the escape photos and identifications are now works of art. Then, patrolled the western beach in the morning without a result, relieved at 12.30. At 16.30, Wing Commander Johnson spoke to the pilots about scrambling. On readiness that night, but only Squadron Leader Russell up with number 443 Squadron. Two Huns shot down, but Squadron Leader Hall, Flight Lieutenant Russell, Flight Officer Gomez, and Flight Officer Waltz missing. Squadron Leader Russell was hit in the engine cowling by Flack. The King came over in a cruiser and landed in a duck a few miles from this camp. He was met by General Montgomery. So we'll sort all this out once we start to look at the individual missions. It was a kind of a complicated day to put together here. Now 443 records, weather clouded with scattered showers. One ME-109 destroyed by Flight Lieutenant Waltz on early morning patrol. Considerable enemy air activity during the night over the beachheads and airfields. No damage to our aircraft or personnel. Squadron Leader McLeod destroyed his 17th enemy aircraft on a fighter sweep in the Con area. In the evening, it being an ME-109. Four of our pilots have not returned from the same sweep. There is no information on their fate. All have been reported missing. They are Squadron Leader Hall, Flight Lieutenant Waltz, Flight Lieutenant Russell, and Flight Officer Perez Gomez. The airfield is very dusty, having been constructed on an exposed rise of land, and there is no coarse topsoil whatsoever. Considerable difficulty experienced by pilots on landing and taking off due to the sandstorms raised by the aircraft ahead. So we're left with quite a lot to decipher there. I'm just going to start at the beginning and go through it, aided by Johnny Johnson's account, and we do get in that account some very good looks at more practical matters when it comes to conducting scrambles and how operations would have looked from the air, but... I'll start with 443 Squadron. They were the first up, 0500 to 0630, and this was a scramble. Six aircraft scrambled to intercept 20-plus Jerry aircraft over Beachhead. One ME-109 destroyed by Flight Lieutenant Waltz just south of the airfield. Others able to get away without our pilots destroying any more. One ME-109 dove out of the cloud and attempted to strafe aircraft of 442 Squadron taking off, but he did no damage and was later shot down by that squadron, so... We actually have two separate incidents here, the first being the scramble, and then the aircraft shot down by Waltz, and then it turned into basically a patrol, and while they were still up, we get to the second incident, and that's going to be described by 442 Squadron in more detail, and this is at 0605, getting airborne, early morning patrol, on takeoff, bounced by four Fuckwolf 190s, which disappeared into clouds. Later, one 109 sighted and attacked, but... No claim made, so at this point both squadrons are up and seeing more or less the same thing happen. 443 Squadron then lands, followed by 442 Squadron landing from this patrol at 0655. Then next up is 442 Squadron on an uneventful patrol. This is 11 to 1145. Uneventful, no enemy aircraft sighted, no flak, weather 8 to 10 tenths, visibility 10 miles, and that's out here over... The Utah Beach area, I think I got that out of the squadron summary. It mentioned where they went. And you can see already some big differences in the character of these patrols. Where we were looking at two and a half hour flights from Aria Ford. The patrols this day and on subsequent days are sometimes just a matter of 45 minutes. Just up and right back down. So next up is again 442 Squadron. They get airborne at 1755 to 1835. And this is... Intended to be an escort, it tells us here that aircraft took off on escort duty for C-47s and were then ordered down with typhoons doing the escort mission. I'm sure there was a good reason there. Then we get into 443 Squadron, an escort slash patrol. 
So this is six aircraft detailed to escort Dakota transports in from the English Channel to land. The Dakotas could not be found and a patrol was carried out over the beachhead without incident. So unable to find the transports and that would have been about an hour flight landing at 1705. And then we get into the 2030 fighter sweep. Actually, let me do the, the 2050 fighter sweep by 441 Squadron first. Even though this did get airborne about 20 minutes after the... 2030 sweep this one was completely uneventful so the squadron took part in an uneventful sweep to con lisso fralais area and then landed and while that was happening now we get into the one that's going to take a little bit of reconstruction here and this is where i also have the account given by johnny johnson in his book now 2030 takeoff it's described here in the squadron record as a fighter sweep into the argentine area Johnson describes it as more of just a straight-up quick scramble, but I'll start with the squadron account first. Twelve aircraft took off on a fighter sweep into Argentan area as part of an 18-plane formation, six under Wing Commander Johnson, six under Squadron Leader McLeod, and the remaining under Squadron Leader Hall. Thick flak encountered in Con area, 10 tenths cloud, 3,000 feet, visibility good beneath, three ME-109s reported north of Con. And on chase being given, one was destroyed by Squadron Leader McLeod for his 17th kill. The remaining two enemy aircraft escaped, and at the same time, one Falk Wolf 190 shot down by Wing Commander Johnson in the same area out of a group of four. So let me go through Johnny Johnson's account here, and this is, again, very detailed when it comes to takeoff procedure and coordination over the radio, so forgive me if I indulge myself for a little longer than I have been here with this account. Twelve of us were sitting at readiness in the cockpits of our Spitfires, prepared for a quick scramble. I had decided to fly with Wally McLeod's squadron, and he was leading the other flight of six aircraft. Should the enemy show any activity in the air, his movements would be picked up by 83 Group's radar and plotted on the operations table at the Group Control Center. Kenway, the code name for our center, would then telephone through to our operations caravan and order the readiness squadron into the air. The signal to take off would be a very light, fired from the operations caravan, and that's to, say, a signal flare. Once we were airborne, we would receive our instructions over the radio, direct from Kenway. After half an hour in the cockpit, gloved and masked, ready for an immediate takeoff, I was rather drowsy as a result of my lack of sleep, but my cramped, uncomfortable position sufficed to keep me awake. Suddenly, a red very light soared into the air from the orchard. Switches on, my fingers pressed the starting button, and my Merlin roared to life. Then I was traveling down the narrow taxi track and made a right angle turn onto the steel planked runway at too high a speed for the starboard wing tilted down at a dangerous angle. A few seconds later, the twelve of us were airborne in a ragged, straggling gaggle, but the boys were already picking up their battle formation. Great Cap to Kenway, airborne with twelve spits, what's the form? Kenway to Grey Cap, bandits active 12 miles south of Con at low level. Please investigate. Grey Cap to Kenway, Roger. Any definite height on the bandits? Kenway to Grey Cap, no, but they're below 5,000 feet out. There was scattered cloud between 5 and 6,000 feet and above the sun blazed from a clear sky. If Kenway's information was correct, they were probably a raiding party of fighter bombers. I eased the Spitfires through a gap and flew immediately below the cloud base. Grey Cap from Blue 3, bandits at 9 o'clock, 2,000 feet below. Roger, Blue 3, I have them. They're heading towards us, turning port. The bandits were a mixed gaggle of Falk Wolfs and Messerschmitts, about a dozen all told. Now, they were immediately below me, heading towards Con. Then I spotted four 190s flying in a wide, evenly spaced finger formation. But the starboard aircraft was lagging badly, and in his position, could not be covered by his colleagues. Flying a few feet above the Bocage country, I narrowed the gap between my Spitfire and the 190. His three comrades were still well ahead of him, and he was an easy target. I slid out to one side so I would not have a low line of stern shot, and pulled slightly above him to avoid some high trees as I concentrated on firing. I hit him with the first burst in the engine cowling. More cannon shells ripped into his cockpit, and the 190 plunged into the ground only a few feet below. Oblivious to the fate of their comrade, they continued to streak away at low level, and after making quite certain they were not going to return, the two of us flew back to St. Croix in a wide abreast formation. And then, returning to the squadron records, up next we have an explanation of what happened with Squadron Leader Hall and the other three. Now, Squadron Leader Hall and three pilots of his section are missing, being 
Flight Lieutenant Waltz, Flight Lieutenant Russell, Flight Officer Perez Gomez. Reports from the two remaining pilots of his section, Flight Officer Scarlett and Flight Officer Foster, indicate that the four aircraft were last seen climbing into cloud at 3,000 feet north of Caen over the canal and as a very thick barrage of flak was being thrown up at them. Both pilots lost the others and came below the cloud independently, returning to base and not making further contact. So at the end of the day, they really had no idea what did happen. Now one of those pilots, Flight Lieutenant Waltz, was shot down. He managed to evade capture and return to Great Britain, and he takes up the story in a later interrogation, and the part that applies here is a quote. He says, We attacked a squadron of Focke-Wulf 190s. Owing to the fading light and independable visibility, we did not realize we were outnumbered. During the flight, my aircraft was hit in the engine, and the petrol tanks of the aircraft blew up. And at that point, he bailed out and did manage to evade capture. So it's apparent that after climbing up above the clouds at that last point that the rest of the flight had contact, they were just outnumbered by a squadron of Focke Wolf 190s, and all four were most likely jumped and shot down at that point. But yeah, that's really just, just conjecture on my part. All aircraft of this flight were down by 2200. And that was the end of operational flying for the 16th. The wing moves on to the 17th of June and tries their hand at some dive bombing. That'll be an interesting one to look at. So I'll see you then. Thanks again for watching.